crafting adventure, I took some PVC pipe and cardboard and spray insulation foam and I made an articulated walking centaur skeleton that will eventually become Nightbringer Lelia from League of Legends. However, this centaur skeleton doesn't have any flesh, so let's give her some. Additionally, in the splash art for Nightbringer Lilia, I noticed that the bottom of her hooves are glowing with like this spooky hellish fire. And I thought, you know, I don't know, maybe I could do that. I wondered if I could make her hooves glow with animated programmed LEDs. And on top of that, I wanted to put lights in the thigh and the side of her centaur body where these little flame details are, which I assume is to make her go faster. However, I've never actually worked with LEDs like this before. I've only ever done like fairy lights that are pre-made and ready to go and put those into my costumes. This is going to be the first time soldering and using wires and actually like programming everything. And this is a really big project to jump into with zero experience with LEDs. So I did religiously follow Kamui Cosplay's books and videos about programming LEDs for cosplay. But before I get to lighting her up, I need to give her some fur and I need to learn how to sew that fur. So come watch me struggle. I just unboxed the biggest fucking box of fabric I've ever seen in my life. That is so much fabric. And here it all is in its plushy furry glory. <laughs> This, of course, is going to be what the main body of the Lilia Centaur will be made out of. This nice, rich, navy beaver fur. Um, it does make me extremely worried that when I picked this up, it was really heavy. Which means I'm going to be covering the already heavy, um, precariously balanced Centaur body with more heavy shit. So, we'll see how that works out. And then we have the white long pile, which will get dyed. We have some white beaver fur which will also get dyed and then this is the minky fabric that the main torso is going to be covered in my torso not the centaur torso and then this whoop, this is a stretchy gold vinyl and anywhere that's like gold on the body is going to get covered in this um like it's going to be eva foam pieces but instead of painted i'm going to cover it in stretch vinyl <laughs> all right it's a lot of fabric so the bottom of Lily's feet, right above the hooves, it goes from like a yellow to red maroon to that navy purple gradient in the fur. And what I was thinking was to take some white long pile fur and also some of the white beaver fur that I really like and try dyeing them that gradient and then they will get sewn to the navy fur that I already have. Because the lights, I did test, the lights do shine through the white fur and I'm thinking if they're dyed, yellow and then maybe a little bit of red then the light should still shine through and look like that cool fire effect my first go at dyeing this fur was to dye the entire piece yellow first then after that was done and washed i would dip dye it red on one end to get that gradient effect and this did not go to plan so here are the fabric pieces dried and brushed out they look pretty washed out on camera um, and I'm not, I, I don't like this color. Um, and I don't like this color. So I did it again. I attempted to mix some of the dyes together for a more vibrant orange color. So this is the color that the orange pieces is turning out. Orange. Um, I'm not feeling it. I hope the next batch turns out better. However, these turned out great. The first, the first go with this yellow gradient is going well, so. Hopefully the top also matches. I, I pulled these um, out of the dye bath and they're pretty much just yellow. They're not even orange a little bit, like. <laughs> Same color as those. They're meant to be orange. I put so much of this red in here and it just didn't take. So I gotta do it again. <laughs> One interesting technique I fashioned from this dip dyeing experience was to have the hangers on my microwave door holding the fabric with clips so I could let them sit in the dye bath for longer might have accidentally set one of those fur pieces on fire by leaving it dangling over the edge of the pot instead of above. Might have. I don't know. So dyeing the fur didn't exactly go as I hoped. Um, after 
everything. This is how some of the inserts for the main body turned out as far as color. And like, it's okay. It does look a little bit more vibrant in person than it does on camera, but it's not, it's just not quite there. It's really like muted compared to the reference. And then here's how the hoof fur turned out. And like, you can just tell how like gray and muddy this red is. The yellow is great. Like that's a nice vibrant yellow, but this wine red that I used just wasn't a good choice for color. So I'm gonna redo all of the dyeing on the um, hoof pieces. And instead of dyeing the inserts, I actually just got an already nicely colored fur from the same place I got the white beaver fur. Um, and it's just a nice amber color. So instead of the like wine red dye, I got scarlet. This should be a much nicer color in the end. Um, I'm still gonna stick with the same yellow. I'm also gonna be leaving the fur in the dye bath a lot longer and I'm gonna add like twice as much of this to the dye bath too. Really make sure that color pops. Um, I did order a ton of extra long pile fur luckily, but I could still run out if I fail enough times, so. Hopefully the die turns out on the next go. Okay, let's do it again. That time's the charm. You really gotta be thorough when washing out the dye from the fur, otherwise it could stain everything it touches. I started dyeing these pieces at around 11 a.m. this morning, and it is currently 6 p.m. Hi. Hello. And now that I was finally mostly happy with the gradient on the hoof fur, I could start making patterns for the main body. As always, I go back to the tried and true method of cling wrap and duct tape. Lilia has an orangey fur belly and orangey sections on her side as well. These side pieces will also have LEDs underneath them that look like flames traveling down her body but I decided not to add lights to the underside where her belly is since that will hardly be visible in the end. Before I went straight into sewing the fur, I did try a mock-up first to test the fit. I also made a mock-up of the cover that would go over the back legs. However, the sock that I made for the leg doesn't fit. And I should have seen this coming because it's a really weird shape. Like it's really big on top and it's got a big chunky hoof on the bottom. So no matter how um, stretchy of a fabric it is, it's just not gonna go over that form. And I'll just have to hand sew it. Like I'll just have to have each side piece, then maybe I can machine sew up one side and then hand sew down the other side. One extra piece that I neglected to pattern was Lilia's tail. This will just be some red fur with foam underneath it uh, to make sure that it stands up and when it's finished, it will be hand sewn onto her butt. Then finally came cutting out the fur fabric. So I realized that the fur is actually in the wrong direction. Like it's currently facing like the opposite of gravity, the opposite of what a deer's fur would be. Like it's going up the leg instead of down. And I'm debating whether or not it's worth redrawing and recutting just this one, because this piece would be a waste. Whether or not I have enough to spare, because like, I know it's probably worth it, huh? I think I'm gonna redo it. Cutting out all those pieces with the box cutter was a lot more um, physically challenging than I thought it would be. I'm definitely gonna get a blister right here from holding it so hard, but I did end up redoing the direction of the fur and redrawing and cutting out some pieces. I think the shine just looks so much better. This direction versus, it was like this direction and it was like dull, but I like how much more depth this gives, so. All the leg pieces are cut out. I still need to do the main body and the pants. I used the same technique on the main centaur body pieces using my duct tape, duck, 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 quack, quack, using my duct tape template as a pattern. So 
So this is one of the back leg thigh pieces that has a big like orange hole right in the middle where light's gonna shine through. So I have to sew in this little insert and I'm probably gonna have to do it by hand. The thing I need to make sure that I do is keep the fur going in the same direction. So I have to pin it pretty accurately so that it's kind of seamless. And then I also, I believe, I'm gonna have to cut in some like notches here because otherwise this won't be able to like bend around and I won't be able to really sew it very well. All of the amber fur in the thighs and torso was sewn in by hand so I could follow the complex shapes uh, just a little more easily. I knew if I tried this with my sewing machine, it would either break my needle or would sew through the wrong areas. This whole process did teach me that I don't love working with fur. Uh, cutting, trimming, shaving it made an even bigger mess than the spray foam earlier and my face was so freaking itchy working with this stuff. I was sneezing and sniffling and getting teeny tiny particles of fur all over my home. Eventually, I just gave in and bought a hand vacuum just for this project. This thing might be the best cosplay tool I've ever bought. Vroom vroom, gotta go fast. So I have finished sewing up the fur inserts onto the main torso of the centaur. This is gonna be like the belly area. And here are those like flame details that are gonna have fire LEDs underneath them. There are also these darts, which are gonna get clipped together and sewn up. This is the butt, and then this is the front, the bend of the like square frame. So those will get pinned and sewn together as well. And then I can sew these two whole pieces together. And that'll basically be a giant sock that goes over the centaur body. So my little machine back there was really struggling to get through all of this fur um, and especially the sections that the darts are in because it's like four layers of fur that she's to sew through. So I'm gonna go in and sew these up by hand just to make sure there aren't any holes because there's definitely a nice big hole right here. And then once I'm done with that, I'll be able to turn this inside out and actually try fitting it on the centaur. God, I hope it works the first time. Sock. Okay. <laughs> so, overall, it does fit. However, it's loose and kind of baggy in an unflattering way. Um, so what I'm gonna do is be finding the parts that could be tightened quite a bit and doing that, tightening them. So it's basically this entire bath. And so I forced my poor little sewing machine to once again make it through all these layers of fur. I did probably break three or four needles working on this though. It's so scary. I finally got um, a sewing needle that should be able to go through this and not snap every single time I'm sewing. So I'm going to be attaching the hook parts to the full leg and even just looking at it now, I'm probably going to add more of like a color gradient here, maybe with an airbrush or maybe with some markers of paint. We'll see. It's kind of nerve wracking every single time I make progress on this. By the way, you can tell I've started the LEDs there. I'm kind of filling this out of order. The needle goes through. I'm, I'm so scared that I forgot to put the thread in the needle. <laughs> Dyed piece has been sewn to the whole leg piece. And then, of course, at the end, and I think like end to end, like close to being done, my last step is gonna be to airbrush things to give them more depth, give them more gradient, give them, you know, a little more oomph, if that makes sense. And I'm saying airbrush, but like, I still don't know how to work an airbrush. I might just hand paint it. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of them now. 
This full fur sock gets sewn up halfway with machine, then the fur gets pulled over the legs I already made, and then hand sewn up the other side with the bones and LEDs all trapped underneath. I took a break from working on Lilia and I made a Zelda cosplay because Tears of the Kingdom is coming out in like two weeks. I'm very excited. And I needed the break. I think it turned out pretty good too. Not bad, not bad. So I took about like a two and a half week break from working on Lilia basically at all. I made no progress on Lilia because I was working on another cosplay. So I'm back from working on Miku. Goo. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to pull that out. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Well, there's still holes still there. I'll figure this out. My goal is to 100% finish the butt of the centaur, the back legs and the body, and I guess the front legs of the centaur. All of the lights are actually done and coated and attached to the base of the leg, um, both legs. They need their fur covers, which have to be hand sewn up, which I'm gonna do today. Um, the body of the centaur here still needs lights um, on the actual body and I need to make this cover smaller. And then the lights for the front legs are programmed and soldered together. They just need to be attached to the shoe and then like sewn into little pants so I can actually wear them properly. But yeah, I'm back from my little, little crafting break. I truly do not want to get started on Lilia. I'd much rather be working on Miku right now. Um, it's not a great feeling, but I also know I have to get this done and I'll feel better when it is done. My biggest worry with this hand sewing and this sock is that once it's all together, the it would be too tight to actually have any of this movement. It's fine if the movement gets like a little bit smaller, like it's not as swingy, but if it's too stiff to move at all, I'd be really sad because I would have to remake both of the socks for the legs. It'd be really, really frustrating. I also have to reattach this because I accidentally just pulled it out. What the fuck do you do this? Okay, hot glue time and sewing time. Let's go. Speaking of LEDs, at this point of the build, I actually have already started a lot of the LED process. I've started testing some of the lights and soldering some of the wires for the first time. I don't really have too much recorded of this process though, mostly because I had no idea what I was doing and still don't. It was really hard to concentrate on both getting these LEDs finished and filming. I mostly just did the work, the soldering, and then filmed afterwards like what I had completed. I did draw up this overall plan for how I wanted the LEDs to be wired, where I wanted those wires to go, and where I wanted the batteries to sit. First things first though is to do lots of tests. Testing what type of animation I want, how fast I want the lights to go, how bright I want them to go, what color I want them to be in the end. I have never soldered anything before, so a lot of those connections did break at first. I also had to make sure that these lights would remain on when the articulated walking was all put together and that the wires wouldn't be pulling on the lights and ripping off the solder, making sure all the wires were the right length, knowing how much the fur was gonna glow, calculating how many LED strips I'd need to be cutting, all of this stuff. This process was extremely involved and complicated. I also discovered that the yellow lights would always diffuse to red, but they showed through the fur really well, while cooler colors like blue were hardly visible at all through this fur. But I did really like the way the LEDs glowed underneath the long pile. I also changed my original reference to have the LEDs wired in like a snake-like pattern and instead had more of a branching pattern. And this is so all of the animations will be playing in the same direction at the same time. That way the final look would be a crawling effect of fire going up the hooves. I would not have been able to do any of this without the help from my spouse. They were an invaluable piece of this puzzle and helped every step of the way. But the thing that I learned above all while working with LEDs was that I never want to work with LEDs again. <laughs> the amount of troubleshooting issues and technical problems was enough to give me an aneurysm with how stressful it was. The animation would randomly stop working, the code wouldn't upload to the lights, the batteries would get fried, it was a nightmare. This leg is theoretically 
finished with all the wiring. Um, I'm going to heat up all these little connections where the tape is. Then we're going to test it again, just to double check that all the lights still work. And then I can permanently put these lights down onto the hoof instead of just taping them down. So heat gun, seal, glue. And then the other last step is going to be, these are long wires that are going to go into the horse body um, to actually like attach to the battery and the mechanism and all that. And I'm just going to literally like drill a hole straight through the leg and like bring them through. Okay. Got this. <laughs> So the plan is to measure this all the way around and then divide by 10 because how many lights there are and mark where they all go and then hot glue them down. The LEDs are attached directly into the leg with hot glue. It's a pretty solid connection. Um, I am worried about how floating these are. Like, I'm just so worried that they're going to be getting in the way of the actual movement or they're going to get caught. I don't know. Um, the only other thing I added was I added hot glue to the end of the nut here because it kept falling off. So now it can still rotate, but it won't pop off when it's stuck inside of its little fur sock. Now I have to make a hole for this wire to go through so it goes into the other side and then this is where it will enter the horse body and get plugged in. <laughs> and thankfully, the lights did still work while the back legs were moving. It was hard enough to make this centaur walk. I also had to make it glow and walk at the same time. What the fuck is wrong with me? So after I finished sewing up these fur covers for the legs, I forgot to record what the movement looks like now because obviously with big fur sock over this thing, it's probably going to change the way these joints move. And the this little back knee does still have pretty good movement. However, the ankle super stiff now and before it was wiggling all over the place. And a lot of people in the comments of like TikTok work in progress videos were just really upset that the legs were so wiggly. So maybe this will ease their mind. <laughs> um, you can see the back, all this fur is cut out and these wires are gonna go into the main horse body. I'm not that mad that the movement is actually a little bit more restricted than before. I still think this level of movement is pretty cool. Um, but I also haven't put this on again and actually done the movement with like the wire attached to my legs. So, it might not look good at all, but <laughs> we'll see. And here is what the lights look like underneath the gradient hoof fur and the amber thigh fur when the cover is entirely sewn over the leg. I did end up adding a sheet of semi-translucent foam called Plastizote underneath the thigh circle to help diffuse those lights more. I still have to finish soldering the lights that go here on the side of the horse. I keep calling her a horse, she's a deer. Centaur, whatever. But once those lights are done, I'm actually gonna cover it in a layer of plastizote because I've discovered that the LEDs aren't diffused enough through that amber fur. And then the big sock goes over this. I make sure to cut out these holes and make sure to cut out these little body holes too for the, for the wire. Then I think I can do a test. I'm also working on the front legs and I've gotten quite a lot of work done on the front legs. The centaur is coming along. But, of course, I wasn't entirely finished with the LEDs. The sides of Lilia's horse body are getting some strips underneath those amber flame shapes. Luckily, these pieces are much, much simpler than the complex branching on each leg. These have been soldered and tested and are getting attached with hot glue. God, I love this effect. I think they look so cool. I'm complaining endlessly about the lights, but like, it looks cool. I can't deny that. 
This is the semi-transparent plaster zoat that I mentioned earlier. It's getting added to the top of these LEDs and will help diffuse those pinpricks of lights and make them look softer. Oh, look at her glowing. She's so pretty. Spouse, what are you, what are you doing? Are you trying to be the star of the show here? I see how it is. However, the centaur butt is still not finished. She needs armor. There are some really cool gold shapes that go around the back of her legs, and that's going to be made out of my favorite cosplay material, EVA foam. And I will be wrapping all of this foam in a gold stretchy vinyl fabric so I don't have to worry about spray painting it. So let's make those patterns the cosplayer's favorite way. The secret to gluing together EVA foam to make these interesting shapes is to cut them out at an angle. I use this method through the entire build and it gives these small armor pieces extra depth. I use the exact same patterning and gluing methods to cover the EVA foam in the gold vinyl fabric. Contact cement is a great glue for working with foam or fabric. Just make sure to do tests to see how well it sticks. And wear a respirator when working with this toxic stuff. <laughs> I hear you. These last details were added with hot glue directly onto the fur. And finally, finally, they are done being crafted. Well, except for the constant technical issues from the LEDs, which I was still trying to solve. These lights, dude, fuck these lights. Oh, but I did eventually get them to work. Glowing centaur, here we come. So finally, the hardest part of Nightbringer Lilia is m mostly finished. But for whatever reason, I did not do a try on um, with all the lights and the walking before I continued with the rest of the build. I was just crunching pretty hard to get this cosplay finished for the LCS cosplay contest deadline. Which means now we get to move on to the rest of the actual build, not just the centaur butt. So it's going to be the torso shirt piece, her pauldrons and her bracers, her giant helmet and her sight. And most of those pieces will also be glowing with LEDs like the centaur butt. But I know what I'm doing now, right? Right? And if you have any advice for like parts of this build that you thought I did really inefficiently or tools or materials that would have helped a lot, please tell me, <laughs> please tell me. I want to know. I want a lumpy bumpy brain full of information, please. Yeah, please stick around to see me finish the rest of this build. There will be one more video to wrap up all of those pieces I talked about. Please, we're almost done with this bitch. Let's go. Even though as we're recording this, she's been done for months. <laughs> Goodbye. Do 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 fart fart. <laughs>